um, you know, folks are coming equipped with like snorkel equipment and stuff like that. And um, there, there was talk about a 350 surf riders um, organized by the Surf Rider Foundation to be doing the action at Ocean Beach. I think with them, they're having technical problems about logistics, so they might just come with their surfboards to Justin Herman Plaza. Um, either way, all of these actions are going to be converging at Justin Herman Plaza at 3 p.m. We're doing a mass readout, co-sponsored by um, Youth Speaks, so they're going to bring the green team of youth poets. And then it's intergenerational, so half the poets are going to be from Youth Speaks, half the poets are going to be um, organized by Rebecca Solnit Davis sister who is a well-known author and poet, she's going to bring out some of the older, more well-known uh, poets and authors from the day, including probably some City Lights folks. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do, instead of just boring political speakers, well, boring some people, um, <laughs> we're going to have a, a poetry readout. And then um, we're also going to be doing a big visual build, including that parachute that we used last month. And then we're going to actually create, we just, cre we just came up with this idea, but um, building a formation of an eye around the center of the parachute. So it's kind of like politicians, specifically Obama, we're watching you and, and we're keeping the eye while you're going into these climate debates. Um, <clears throat> so that should be pretty exciting. Um, we're also going to have an action station there, which we're going to take signups for Beyond Talk, as well as um, we're going to have a, a phone booth where people can it's going to be like a cardboard box where people can step in. We're going to have some prepaid phones where they can make calls to their, to either uh, their legislator or someone else. So that's what's going to happen on October 24th. Um, you can def definitely support either coming to our organizing meetings or just attending and outreaching for us. We have beautiful postcards for you. And we have extras, so please take some if you could take them to your offices or just hand out to friends and family. Um, <clears throat> And we also have posters. And then uh, after the 24th, our energy, and we're starting those conversations now, but our energy will be shifted to N30, November 30th, which is the, uh, it was, the day was chosen because it's the anniversary of the Seattle WTO protest 10 years ago. Um, <clears throat> but we're kind of using it strategically since it's right before the Copenhagen talks as a way to bring more awareness to the grassroots movements happening uh, leading up to Copenhagen. And um, this, is, this is actually a lot of national or organizing happening. We're going to be throwing our own local event, which we're talking about now, about what that will be and what our messaging will be. But there's also actions happening um, that are being organized by the Mobilization for Climate Justice nationally and some other groups, too. So that's going to be a future action that she'll be able to plug into. Um, we just don't have details yet. But that's just keeping an ear out for that. Beyond that, well, some of us will be going to Copenhagen and, and organizing there. Um, and then from there on, it's just continuing our efforts and, uh, and our campaign, like I said, towards the US social forum and maybe beyond that. We have an announcement uh, email list that you can sign up for. We'll send out announcements. Um, if you're interested in organizing, um, you can also give me your email, especially, I mean, specifically to organize the October, October 24th action. You can give me your email there, and I can put you on our, our list for that action. Okay. And we have brought a lot of these cards, and we weren't expecting to go back with uh, take them back with us. So what we've been asking people to do is take large handfuls, not just one or two, but uh, enough to hand out in your neighborhood, in your schools, in your workplaces, and to all the other uh, public events you may be going to. Uh, the coming uh, weeks. Questions? Yeah. Questions? Sure. Here's our poster. I have a question. <clears throat> what's the expectation about what's going to go down in Copenhagen? Well, there's, um, as you as you well know, we uh, here locally, uh, or locally here in the U.S., uh, there are very low expectations for any kind of climate legislation before Copenhagen uh, at this point. And uh, the entire world, uh, this new administration uh, in place, is looking at uh, what can come out of a, a U.S. offer on the table. Uh, there's a lot of skepticism. In the most recent round of negotiations around Kyoto in Bangkok, the U.S. has uh, the U.S. team has gone back to uh, the kind of uh, offers that the Bush administration.
demonstration we're making. Basically, it's suggesting that a new regime uh, be put forward where differentiated responsibilities are shelved and they look at individual nation specific policies that totally undermines the Kyoto process. Not that the Kyoto process, from a justice based perspective, is the best deal, but uh, the southern nations, uh, especially the most heavily impacted nations, uh, are, are seriously threatening to walk at this point and do not expect uh, a, the African uh, continent uh, as a bloc has basically indicated that it, there's a high likelihood of them walking in Copenhagen. So there's, uh, there's all kinds of background reasons for this. Um, a big part of it is how much money the, the Annex One countries or the big you know, the G20 is going to put on the table for, for technology transfer, for clean development pathways for uh, the developing world, uh, and and right now nothing really substantive has been offered. Uh, but even more, I think, disconcerting is the fact that the U.S. still does not want to make any commitment to any hard reductions uh, targets. And so, uh, what we the way we are uh, grassroots movements are looking at this is that uh, again, uh, Copenhagen's not Copenhagen's not going to uh, as much as there's a lot of hype about. Uh, the need to renew a new uh, protocol uh, past two, uh, 2012, that it doesn't end uh, in, in, to, in, at Copenhagen. In fact, grassroots movements have to start looking beyond Copenhagen to where can we reasonably expect our voices to be represented at any national or international forum. So with that in mind, uh, I think we're, we, I think we, what we would like to see is uh, more and more people out on the street, more people at the actions, and uh, as some of you are enough that we can remember the battle in Seattle. Uh, there's a very close parallel that back then I think there was a recognition that the corporate agenda had so dominated the trade arena that uh, people needed to step up and really, uh, really expose the uh, how the trade arena was going against all democratic principles. And uh, that's where we're at with the, with the climate arenas. And, and I'd encourage all of you to uh, come out when you hear. Uh, the call for a big action on November 30th, whether it's uh, wherever it's being held in the city. So maybe a little bit of a difference. So we're not trying to shut down talks; we're trying to lock them in. Who do you see as the direct impact of local actions, like the ones you're talking about, on federal and global talks? I know this is sort of a complex question, and I'm asking this as from a friendly point of view, as also being an activist. What do you really see as the impact of what we're doing locally on the federal and the global talks, especially here in California, where Barbara Boxer is actually already one of the better actors in the summit? Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's uh, being visible, um, obviously. <laughs> but um, not just for ourselves as like our individual goals as an organization, but I think, um, and even locally here, I think what we're trying to do in in, in uh, solidarity with the national movement and international movement is trying to build this street heat towards these public, I mean, to, like, towards these political debates. So to me, it's really showing that the West Coast is visible, that that the grassroots movement is opposing visibly and strongly um, what's going on politically in uh, in the Senate and at Copenhagen. <clears throat> And then, uh, and and we definitely are keeping in contact with the national movement, and a lot of us are also talking to the Climate Justice Now folks, who are part of the international actions happening. And so I think it's really like seeing everybody connecting, and all these little fires, public street beat fires, popping up. It really helps. Oh yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's kind of says it. It's really historically when I think back as to you know what kind of change direct action has brought about. Uh, in terms of social movements, uh, when we look at the anti-nuclear movement, uh, there, uh, and when you actually study what happened, you know what really shelled all the nuclear power plant proposals. It was really uh, it was the masses that really uh, came out and opposed the massive subsidies to nuclear power that were being made up to the 80s that uh, that forced the government to back out of a lot of these uh, dirty deals.